Hello and welcome back to the Future Energy Conversations. This series of conversations is part of the Cape Town Future Energy Festival and brings together thought leaders to grapple with the really tough questions around sustainability and energy. Today, we're talking to a stellar team of students who have designed and constructed a net zero carbon building as part of the Solar Decathlon competition of 2019. Their design won stellar points at the competition. And here today we have Team Mahali to tell us more with our very own Leslie Sabanda. Hi, I'm Leslie and I'm with the city of Cape Town, where my role is to facilitate the transition to a net zero carbon build environment and to mainstream the idea of net zero carbon buildings within Cape Town. Um, one of the challenges with net zero carbon buildings is people think that they are not feasible for the South African context. And so joining me today is Tim Mahali, who've not only designed, but have constructed a net zero carbon building. So Sean, welcome. Uh, please introduce your team for us. And thank you for joining this conversation today. Thank you for having us, Leslie. Um, my name is Sean, and I'm with Shane and Wimbai. We are three out of 30 members from Team Mahali, which is a group of postgraduate students from all types of backgrounds that participated in the first ever Solar Decathlon, which was hosted in Africa, or the first uh, Solar Decathlon hosted in Africa. Please tell us more about the Solar Decathlon competition. So the Solar Decathlon is an international design build contest that challenges postgraduate students of architecture, engineering, and sustainability to design and build a net zero energy house over an 18 month period. Oh wow, that's quite impressive. And I see you have a t-shirt on that's written Tim <laughs> Mahali. Uh, so yes. please explain to us what Mahali means. Okay, so Mahali means place in Swahili and um, we decided upon that because the 30 members that are Com comprising of Team Mahali are all from Sub-Saharan Africa. That's quite interesting. 30 members, interdisciplinary team, and I like that catchphrase, one... One place, shared space. One place, shared space. Yeah. space. And That's this pretty. is actually a hemp shirt as well. Oh, wow. Yes. So you guys are leaving the ethos of um, sustainability. sustainability. <laughs> yeah. That's quite good. Um, so, Wimbai, I just want to speak about the design. What was the inspiration behind your design? I mean, is, is the space, as it says, one place shared space. We had to come up with a house that could fit in a box, but something that could house five people. It had to be a two-bedroomed house. And in order for us to achieve that, we really had to tap into our design skills and trying to adapt to the context and the environment and uh, the skills that the team was bringing forth to the table. Okay, um, can you elaborate more specifically on the design um, that you guys had? So our main concept was the use of um, a tree as that one idea of somewhere where people can gather and um, share information and ideas. That came about from the use of the concept of biomimicry. We wanted to use natural systems and natural environments in order to inform a structure where um, the setting could bring about something that would not use as much energy as possible. That was one of the ideas. Oh, wow, that's quite um, interesting. Um, you know, the idea of designing with nature um, in, in, in space. Okay, so let's talk about performance. I mean, it's one thing to design um, and then now to see it actually in operation. So how did your house perform? Thank you, Leslie. Yeah, our house had a solar home system integrated into the design and um, we had a tensile fabric uh, roof structure and the flexi panels were um, installed on top of that. And in terms of its performance, did it actually become a net zero carbon building in operation? Yes, it did. In, uh, over the period of time, we generated more energy than we used and predicted to be more throughout the year. In terms of materials, what type of materials did, um, did you use and what influenced the decision around material selection? We decided to go with timber as a main uh, substructure and that was locally sourced in Morocco. Um, 
as well as our recycled um, panels that we had wrapped around the house. So the house was clad with these panels and they were crocheted from uh, recycled plastic bags that were made by ladies in the French Hook um, Valley. Yeah. And they were, they, I think they used 6,900 of those panels, uh, of the bag, sorry, to create these beautiful, colorful and vibrant panels. No, that's quite, um, that's quite good. It seems your guys' key principles were around designing with nature and a lot of upscaling as well and getting as, as upcycling and getting a lot of your materials within, um, within um, the local um, context. So what I just want to understand is more around the cost of the house, um, did those principles make the house more cost-effective or more expensive or, yeah? So, the, the house is priceless. <laughs> um, but for, for the Solar Decathlon, we received seed funding of 50,000 US dollars to build the house. And we could also receive donations on top of that, which we did. Um, yeah. I think that answers the question. Okay. Now that we've addressed um, the question on cost, which is always the biggest misconception around net zero carbon buildings, what are some of the challenges that um, you, you, you had not anticipated before going on site to construct the building? I think one of it was um, we underestimated the sophistication of building in Morocco in the sense of we designed a house with timber pots that, uh, that was CNC cut from plywood. And we, first of all, plywood was very expensive in Morocco and it was not readily available. Mm -hmm. And then we had to reduce our design to something else and change it a little bit. Um, yeah, so that was one of the examples. So uh, uh, for me, that just highlights the importance of always being flexible and willing to adapt if you designing and constructing it's a, well, any building, for example. Yeah. Um, so I know this was designed um, and you developed, you designed this house or built it in Morocco. Um, and it's the first time that South Africa is being represented. It's such a global space, and I'm sure you interacted with other teams. So if I'm just going to ask each of you if you can share one lesson or an experience um, that, can, that you took away from that whole competition that we can now use um, as learnings for the South African context. So, Wimbai, I don't know if you want to go first. Sure. Um, well, there is so much that we learned. I mean, it's, it's difficult to narrow it down to one, but I'll give the others a chance to also say more. But for me, the biggest thing was um, the learning how to not just zone into your professional skills, but to also adjust to learning new things in order for us to be able to make this happen because we didn't have any professionals on the team. It was just us as students and that was a good thing for us. So that's quite interesting because I know your background, you're an architect by profession, but on yeah. the team you actually did a PR role. So is that I where did. the lessons are? <laughs> I did, <laughs> yeah. From? I surprised myself. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's always good. That's good. Um, yeah. And Shanae, biggest lesson? Um, yeah, I don't actually know what to say now. It's a tough one. <laughs> there were so many lessons. Mm. So, so many lessons. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot was learned from other teams, yeah. how other teams used building materials. So the one house, Sun Implant, was entirely made out of hemp. Oh. And it was the most comfortable, livable uh, house at the competition. Mm. It didn't even need an air conditioner just because yeah. hemp insulation is so good. Mm. And that's quite surprising considering the climate in Morocco, which uh, is quite like very high temperatures. So a building like that without any um, air conditioning is quite a good, a good design. I think the, the one thing that I could add is um, with design built, it is always interesting to see how creative you can get when you have budget constraints or, mm. say, for instance, a language barrier you have to overcome in a, in a very hot climate. So also the resilience of humans, you know, mm. we, we're kind of adaptable. <laughs> and um, I think a, a design built is a very good concept to um, be part of. Okay, so what next for Tim Mahali? What are the future aspirations for the team? So the journey continues. 
and um, we are hoping to explore how construction can be used to un untap social development and environmental restoration mm -hmm. in, in South Africa. Cool. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you to each of you for joining us and demonstrating that net zero carbon buildings are feasible and can be built for the South African context. And well done again. Um, congratulations on um, taking part, but then also for uh, your position coming second under the architectural um, category. I think you've made Cape Town proud and you've also made South Africa proud. Uh, so thank you and congratulations. Thank you. Wasn't that inspiring? A homegrown team that placed second in a globally recognized competition. I think we're gonna see a bit more of Team Mahali. Keep an eye out on the Cape Town Future Energy Festival website and social media. There's lots coming up.